Aaron Meyer, how are you? Great to see you, even if only via computer. Great to see you. I'm doing good. How are you, Kevin? Uh, you know, holding up. I'm not getting to make my normal trip to Portland this year, but, you know, life could be a lot worse. So tell me, how are you holding up during the pandemic? You're, this has got to, as somebody who performs and, 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 and teaches uh, and is, you know, you're in the in-person business, this has got to change your life a lot. It's really changed my life a lot. I mean, certainly for the, the concert part of it and the performing, that's, uh, that's changed dramatically to, um, you know, Facebook concerts, online concerts. Um, and, uh, you know, what, what I've really been doing a lot of more than ever is, is music education and teaching through, you know, online teaching. So you're teaching, you're teaching specifically the violin, obviously. Um, via Zoom. Now, how does that work? Because I would imagine, I mean, I, I have absolutely no musical talent, but I would imagine that if just where one puts one's finger on the strings and how you're holding the instrument has got to have an enormous impact on, obviously, on the sound. How do you do that online? Yeah, well, uh, you know, I've, I've actually been teaching um, by video conference for about seven or eight years now. So I'm you're ahead of I guess so. I mean, I, I never thought of it that way until now, but <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm very used to teaching on a computer with the person not in the room. So it's, it's easier and, um, you know, you can fix things when they're in the room, but when they're not here, um, you have to be um, sort of, you know, have a, a different set of skills, which is, you know, learning how to communicate using the computer. So the sound doesn't, of course, come through instantaneously and perfectly all the time, but it's good enough to make it work. And I've taught, you know, I don't know, 30 or 40 students over, over seven, seven or eight years this way. So I know it can work, um, but once we get into a, a rhythm, it takes a little bit getting used to, you know, of being able, being able to have the kid watch the music, concentrate on what they're doing, but then be able to come back here right when I need them to say, hey, you know, do this with your finger, do that, get your, get your violin up, get your wrist out, you know, all these different things. Um, it's required me to be very specific and clear of how I communicate. So, you know, that's been good. That's probably um, a good lesson just in general about communication, like precision is always better than being vague. Absolutely. And it's really forced me to, you know, explain very, very clear. I've had to rethink things, you know, to say them in a, uh, in a way that, that, the, that the student can understand and make sense of it. And, and you're not just, I mean, some of these courses, I mean, some of these classes that you're teaching kids, um, this isn't just in the United States. I mean, there's some people you're teaching who are pretty far away. Exactly. Yeah, I always say I'm packing my bags to my wife. I'm going to go teach violin eight thousand miles away up in the in the music room. <laughs> um, as you you've as you've gotten to know me, you know that I love to travel to Southeast Asia, and I've been going to Thailand, and Myanmar, and Cambodia for about ten years in a row now. Um, and a few years ago, when I was in Myanmar, the country to the west of, of Thailand, also known as Burma. Um, I connected with a, a local school because I go to the same little beach town every year. And um, I talked to the director of the school. I said, you know, one year she asked me to come play for the students. Hey, would you share your violin and your music with our kids? So I did. And the kids were very interested. They'd never seen a violin before in their life, but they love music. And, you know, when I went home that year, I thought, you know, what if I brought some violins back the next year and tried violin? So I asked the director and she said, oh, we would love to do that. So I, this last trip in January, I did get to go this year before things closed down. I took uh, four violins and then I spent about nine days teaching the kids. And I was all worried, like, how am I gonna keep this going? And I thought, you know, I'm just gonna try this on, on you know, online teaching video conference. And we did it and it's working. And I teach the kids once a week, even though they're 13 and a half hours ahead of me. And uh, I originally had 16 students and now it's dwindled down to about three. Um, but I know it'll pick up once, once things open up over there too. Also, I, I, they're probably the three most dedicated ones, right? They've got to be the best. Very ones. dedicated. They, they show up at 7.30 a.m. on a Saturday morning, their time. So it's Friday night for me. Um, and they're ready to learn. They practice every day. We have our class online 
and then I do make videos for them so I can show them everything. And, you know, I've gotten good at, you know, doing this. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then I write the music out and I just make, I try to make the clearest, best notes that I can. And, but they're doing great and we're having fun. How are their English skills? Are there, is their English really good or is it, is this a matter of, I mean, it's a cliche that music is a common language. Is that the way it works in, in this case? Well, it is a common language. The notes are the same, and but you know, I I only speak English. So you know, if I'm going to teach them, um, they have to speak English, or someone in the room has to speak English. So, of my three students, two of them are very versed okay. in English. They speak very very well. So that's great. Um, one of them's in his early twenties. Uh, the other boy is eleven, and then there's an eight year old boy who really doesn't speak English at all. And they stay in the room with him and can help communicate. And then his aunt participates and she practices with him too. So we've got a system, you know, you know, I, I never, what was so great about this whole experience is that there was no pressure. It was just like, Hey, we're just going to try it. It's an experiment. If it works, yeehaw, if it doesn't, that's okay. And the kids are blowing me away. They're really doing it and playing beautifully. It is extraordinary the degree in which technology makes this, makes this all, you know, possible. Um, all right, I want to, we're going to talk about the concert you're doing um, in July in, in a few minutes. Um, but first, you did promise us a little concert. So, yeah, a, a first for Morning News Beat. Right. So I'm going to do uh, a short arrangement of, of two tunes. One of, one of them is my song, one of my tunes. It's, it's a pirate song. It's called The Bounty. And the other one I think you'll recognize. Actually, and I have uh, all of your CDs, and, and The Pirate is one of my favorites. I love that. And it always reminds me, have you ever seen the movie Master and Commander? Yeah. Oh, right. And that, right, they, because they play this wonderful violin number on the, on the, they have a bass and I think a violin, and it's terrific. And it's like, it's one of my favorite movie themes. And that's what that always reminds me of. So uh, that was wonderful. So, um, as I, so normally you do a concert every summer. That and it's basically a fundraiser for educational purposes. Uh, it takes place at the Stoller Vineyards, right in in Willamette Valley, and it's and has had as my experience is it has enormous support from the food industry in the Pacific Northwest. I was I've always gotten to go because Ron Brake and his wife Karen have always brought me, um, and I always see lots of familiar faces there. People who have 
you know, a lot of morning news readers, go figure. So tell us a little bit about the concert, how you're doing it this year, and about, the, and about how, the, how the funds are used. So Stoller Family Estates is our host, and, and this will be our fourth annual event. And this really started, um, we wanted this to be a really fun experience. Concert on the lawn, bring your chair, bring your blanket, bring a picnic, just come hang out. We'll have the whole band there. And it's such a stunning setting that we wanted this to be truly in the vineyard and for people to come and, and not make it feel, you know, stuffy or too formal. We wanted it to be fun. And it's a summer concert on the lawn and it supports my music education program that's called Aaron Meyer Music at the Schools. So I've got the whole band there, you know, a 13 person band with horns and singers and all sorts of fun stuff. And then we bring some of my students. And uh, last year we had 500 people show up at the concert and uh, we raised quite a bit of money for my program, which allows me to do um, private violin lessons and provide instruments. I try to go for, for families that are in need and can use some support. And then we do other things too. In, in non-COVID times, we do music camps and we provide scholarships for that. And I do assemblies in schools and everything, almost everything that I do can be free to the school or the organization because we're raising money. And it's not just violin, right? You have other musicians that you work with who also go into the schools as well. Is that right? Absolutely. Yeah, I work with um, all different members of, of my team. Sometimes I bring my keyboard player when we do the, the music, uh, the songwriting programs. And, um, you know, all the people that I work with love to sort of, you know, pass on, you know, music education and share with young people. So we've got a, we've got a lot of support. And as you mentioned, the food industry, I've got a, a couple of really great friends. And um, Ron Brake is a, is a big champion of, of the work that I've been doing for the last 20 years. He's introduced me to a lot of people who either wanted to sponsor my concerts or music programs. And, he's in, and, and just invited a lot of people and brought awareness to what I'm doing. So Mike Zupan, I think, is also a big supporter of yours as well, right? Mike Zupan, Mike Ellis, right. um, a, a whole bunch of great guys, and, and they've become my friends. So That's, that's terrific. Um, so this year, obviously, nobody's going to be sitting on the lawn, but you're, but you're going to go back to the vineyard, you're, and you'll be there doing this yourself, right? Yeah, we're doing the concert. I'm bringing a, a six-piece band plus... Um, three singers, the Brown sisters that you've seen there before. Oh, they're and so a, wonderful. A couple of my students were doing the concert, but it's going to be a virtual online concert. Um, that's not, not the way we want to do it, but it's the, it's the right way to do it during this time. And people can participate. They can go to my website. Uh, it's free. There's a suggested donation if they want to do that. But our goal was um, we really wanted to bring the music. We want to bring the kids and we wanted to bring the vineyard into people's homes and we didn't want it to be a financial burden. We wanted everyone to participate. So if it works out to, to make a donation, yeehaw. And if it doesn't, we completely understand. We want this to be, um, you know, just a kind of an escape and, and a fun time. And, and we're really putting a lot of effort into it. And we're really excited about it. Well, we can all use that. Give the name of your website. Tell us your website address so people can go there and find out more. It's my name. AaronMeyer.com, A-A-R-O-N-M-E-Y-E-R.com. Very easy. I'll make sure it's also on the site. Aaron, it has been great to see you. Great to talk to you. Thanks for the concert. And, um, I, and I'm sure you're going to get a lot of viewers based on the Morning News Beat audience. And I look forward to seeing you next summer out in Portland. Thank you so much, Kevin. Thanks. I appreciate the, the opportunity to be here. <laughs> Take care. We'll see you soon.